Hi everyone! So in this week's video I'm going to talk a little bit about how I get ready to give a lecture if that lecture class doesn't already exist at my university. So if you're new to the channel, hi, my name is Caroline, I'm a UK-based physics lecturer. Now you might have seen one of my previous videos where I talked about how I would get ready to take over a class. So the class already exists at the university, but I'm a new academic coming in to deliver that, that lecture or that module. So I'll put a link to that video in the description box. This video is a little bit different. It's how do I get ready to teach a lecture if that university has not taught that particular material or that particular course before. So I'll give you an example then of how I prepared for an evening lecture that was actually working in a new topic. So a few years ago, I was fortunate enough to launch a space balloon. Um, it wasn't part of my job at the university. It was just for fun. Um, a group of friends, we got together and we decided to have a go at launching a space balloon. And I was motivated and inspired to do this because I'd heard about a particular scientist, engineer and inventor called August Picard. Now, I was not taught about this at university. I hadn't attended lectures on this. It was a personal interest. So actually what I did was I read several books. So I read some books, I read some online resources, um, I read some accounts. I tried to gather as much knowledge as I could about the particular scientist that I was studying, the, the area that he'd worked in, his major achievements, what he'd done, how he'd built the equipment, and the kind of the key milestones in his adventure as this scientist. So I needed to then start to distill all this information from a rambling collection of notes into a concise 45, 50 minute evening lecture that would be suitable for the general public. So the next thing I then I did was I started to look at the images and the pictures. So I was very conscious that I was going to be giving this talk as an evening lecture. And rather than having lots of text on my slides, I wanted to create a bit of a narrative by using images. So not only then did I have all my notes on the subject, and as I said, they were drawn from references, from books, from publications, from newspaper reports. I then started to pull together the images. Um, and it's a little bit challenging because I had to make sure that these images were available in the public domain. So I had to think about copyright and not infringing uh, or putting an image out that I wasn't authorized to use. So now I've got the, the written content, I've got the pictures, um, and the next thing I guess was to link it to my own experience of launching a space balloon. And actually what did I want the audience to really take home and remember? So I wanted them to know how high he'd managed to fly, you know, what year he'd made that exciting flight in, what happened to him next, and how you can get involved in space ballooning today. They were my points that I wanted the audience to go away with. And so when I had my points, I could then start to structure how I wanted to deliver the content. Um, and I wanted to start, you know, with some excitement to get people interested and engaged in the subject. And then as I went through the lecture, sneak in some facts and some figures alongside some really cool images to help retain people's interest. I also used a bit of humour. You know, there was quite a bit of humour in the story. Um, he'd had to find safety equipment and he'd used a wicker basket as a helmet. And I used little pieces of information like that to help keep the interest as I went through the lecture. Now, this is very much I was preparing for an evening lecture. If I'd, if I'd had to do this for a university educational setting, I would then have had to think about the curriculum. My, my top tips or the way I would tackle it is if I'm having to prepare content that's not been taught before, the things I would do is I would check out my own personal bank of information. So be that my own personal lecture notes, uh, publications that I've read, books that I've read, resources that I know that are credible and available on the internet. That would be my first stop. Um, I'm a big fan of keeping notes, so throughout this whole process I'd be keeping notes of the key resources that I'm looking at, whether those resources would be available and accessible to a student studying the course, um, any particular key points that I think I should be teaching, so any key equations or key concepts in my case. 
Uh, I'd be keeping an eye out for really cool figures, images, diagrams, things that would help engage and inform the listener who was having to listen to this lecture as to what I'm teaching. Um, and I'd start bit by bit to pull together what I think would be the key narrative and the key take home points for that particular course or that particular lecture content. So I'd probably sit back and go, okay, what do I want somebody who attends this lecture to walk away having learnt or needs to go and investigate more? You know, what are the ideas and concepts that I want to plant in this lecture to help the student watching it know which areas to go and work in? I think I'd think also about the, the pace. So how much material could I put into that particular time of lecture that I was allocated? I'd think about my assessments. So if I was doing this at a university, I'd need to be factoring in formative and summative assessments. So formative ones are the ones that don't count, but are designed to help you as you go through the course, understand and learn. And then the summative ones, yeah, well, they're the ones that count towards your degree qualification. And I think by doing all of those activities, I would build up not only the content I wanted to teach and deliver, but also I'd know the constraints. So I'd know how many lectures I was allocated, how many students were likely to take the course, if they needed to learn certain ideas in order to help them progress onto a next module, and how I needed to form some kind of assessment structure. And that would probably bound and guide and shape the actual content of my lectures that I was then writing. I'd also get probably a second opinion, so I'd ask a friendly colleague to have a look, see if they think that my material was hitting the mark and would be achieving the aim of that particular lecture or module. Um, and I'd probably try to allow myself lots of time to get ready. Now, time can be a luxury at a university and you may not get lots of time to prepare a lecture, but if it's a new subject or a subject that's not been taught before at the university, um, you should get more time to help you get ready to get ready for class. So I try to make sure that I'd have enough time to start preparing the material, put it to one side, leave it for a week or two, and then come back with a fresh view, a fresh look, and see if I still thought the content and the delivery was relevant. Uh, yeah, and then I think about how I wanted to deliver the actual class. You know, was it going to be just me standing at the front giving a little monologue? Or is it going to be an interactive class? Can I do some kind of flipped learning or blended learning? We can, we can talk about these terms maybe in a future video. Uh, is there going to be a practical element? So maybe computer programming in my case or laboratory based work. And again, that would all help shape how I was going to deliver the content. So I think actually the university setting um, and the structure of how a degree programme operates um, and actually how you have to fit one module to another module, in, at least in physics, would give me quite a strong framework to work in in order to be able to design new content. So I hope this was helpful. Um, it's just a collection of kind of ideas and thoughts about how I would tackle this challenge. Um, do let me know in the comments any times you've had to face this problem where you've had to make new content that maybe didn't exist before or you had limited resources that you could go to. Um, I'm here every Monday, so if academic life is your thing, if going to university, maybe being a lecturer, working in higher education, do hit like, um, do leave me a comment. Uh, I'll be back next week with another video. So have a good week, stay safe, look after yourselves, and I will see you next Monday. Bye.